In this video, I'll be going over how I built this 6 foot wide, 2 feet deep, 3 foot high AccuMonitor enclosure. Although you could house many different species such as bearded dragons with a few simple adjustments. My goal is to do a step by step tutorial on how this was accomplished and I'll also link as much stuff as possible in the description below. To start, I wiped down the PVC enclosure with rubbing alcohol and then applied silicone to all the seams. Then smoothed the silicone using a spoon, roughed up the back of the XPS board using a serrated kitchen knife, then applied a generous amount of 100% silicone, do your research to make sure whatever you're using is animal safe. Then place it on the back wall of the enclosure and added some weight to keep it in place. Use a hot wire foam cutter to the side panels to add a little bit of detail. Make sure to wear a mask when using this tool to protect yourself from the fumes. Then silicone the back and place it into the enclosure. Once again, adding weight to keep it in its place. I knew that I wanted a minimum of 12 inches of substrate in the deep end, so I went ahead and marked my lines accordingly. Marked my hole for the vent on the warm side and did the same thing for the cool side. Getting an idea and mapping out where I'm going to be putting my ledges using XPS board. This part here usually takes me some time as I play around to get everything dialed in just right. Once I get everything to where I want it, I go ahead and trace it out and label it so it's easy to put it back in its place when I start using spray foam. My plan here was to have narrow shelves towards the top so I can have a wider basking spot towards the bottom, maximizing surface space and utilizing temperature gradients. Filling in the gap between the PVC and XPS board, applying Great Stuff spray foam in the areas traced out earlier to place the XPS ledges. Then just stuck it in its place. and then spray foam the bottom seam. Spraying down the spray foam with water to help it cure quicker and denser. Placing in and drawing out my larger main basking ledge. Repeating the same process on the cool side of the enclosure as we did on the warm side. Once cured, picked away all the excess spray foam, then started carving away to add detail to the ledges. This is a pretty simple process that adds a lot of cool character and detail to your build. Drilling out 3 inch diameter holes for my warm side and cool side vents. Using a steak knife to break through the rest of the XPS board and popping it out. To add some definition and character to the background, I'm simply using a drill and a wire brush. Make sure to wear a mask during this process as well. It helps the vacuum as you go along to reduce the mess. Using a heat gun to help tighten up the XPS board from us carving it out. This will help for the durability and for dry lock or grout to bond to better. Started tracing around the ghost wood on where I wanted it to be placed in the vivarium and then started cutting it out. It's better to go to the inside of the line making for a tighter fit rather than a looser fit. And then just picked out the unwanted foam board. I'll spray foam the wood in at a later time. Sketching out where I want to add some extra ledges using spray foam.
When going over plant holders, just put some paper in the center and spray foam over it. Carving down some of the ledges after the spray foam cured. Now, to make a hide on the cool side, trace out the base and use spray foam to attach the walls to. Cut out a hole and save the cutout to the hole, we'll be using that later. Place the cutout back into the hole so we can start working on the lid. Took a thinner piece of XPS board so we can start test fitting our lid. Applied spray foam only on the cutout of the hide base. Then put the lid in its place, pressing it into the spray foam we just laid down. This is so the lid has something to seat into, securing it in its place. I needed to make everything watertight before moving on with the hide, so I started dry locking everything in. In total, I did about seven different coats of dry lock. When using dry lock, make sure you get the original white tintable. To make things easier, add different tones of quick creep for each coat so you can see where to apply next. Now back to the hide, putting on the lid so I can start shaping it to my liking. Sketching out how I want it to flow. Building up more of a rock formation. And then cutting it to fit. Here's the bottom side of the lid. And the top side. Did my first coat of dry lock and added wood glue in the seams to tie it all together. Attaching the hide to the hardscape background using spray foam while building up the front so I can carve it to make it look like fake rock. Trimming down the spray foam in the back so the lid fits flush. Measuring to the top of my substrate so I can focus on where the detailed carving is going to be. Then blending the base of the hide to the spray foam. Cutting out an entrance hole to my desired height. Did a few coats of dry lock to the hide to get that up to speed so I can tie it all in and do the whole enclosure. For the primary color I used terracotta, made a few different shades so I can start dry brushing in the fine detail. Use a new brush when doing dry brushing and pretty much get all the dry lock off the bristles. Start with your darkest tone to your lightest tone. Lightly and gently going over the hardscape will give you the best texture. Now finishing up with my lightest tone to give the highlights. For a temporary hold, hot gluing the wood into the holes we cut out earlier. Spray foaming them into place for a secure hold and then trimming it down to the background. Doing a few coats of dry lock to tie it all in, then dry brushing it like before, giving the background a good spray down. Added the vents using silicone and stainless steel screws. Now for the lighting, I'll be using the Arcadia lamp holder and bracket, test fitted the light fixture, make sure it worked. Dialed it in to target my basket zone. Later on, I did add a second fixture. I'll use a dimmer switch to achieve the required surface temperature. Lining up my UVB light and move the enclosure up onto the rack. If you enjoyed this video so far, like and subscribe. I have a whole room to fill with custom builds.
Now to add the deep heat projector. Disassemble the Arcadia lamp holder and bracket. Unscrew the two pin screws holding the wires in. Marked where I wanted to drill. Fed the wires through the hole we just drilled out. And then just reassembled the fixture. Then mounted it to the ceiling of the enclosure using half inch screws. Now for the substrate. I used Scott's organic topsoil, clay sand, and a small amount of sphagnum moss to create microclimates. I used a 70% topsoil and 30% clay sand ratio. Went ahead and mixed it all together. I think I did this about 14 times. Added some cork bark as a divider to create different gradients. And then backfilled it all in. Have my marker so I can see how deep my substrate is getting. My hopes are the hole at the bottom will act as the start of the burrow for the warm side hide. Placed it in its spot and secured it into place. Removing the lid to fill up the cool side hide. Now to add a few plants. We'll see how long these last. Just in case my Aki does uproot them, I have a couple of ideas. It'll be putting them in plant holders and zip tying screen mesh to the top of the plant holder. Digging a hole, filling it with sphagnum moss to create a few microclimates for my microfauna. Placing cork bark over the top so I can mark it and water if needed. Spreading out leaf litter all throughout the enclosure. Add a Miss King nozzle with a shutoff valve so I can bump humidity if needed. Got my custom cut tempered glass and placed them in the tracks. Install the lock so he doesn't break out. Adding in my microfauna. To start, I'll use springtails, some dairy cow isopods, and some powder blue and powder orange isopods. Filling in the holes at the top of the enclosure using plumber's putty. Setting up my Gobi timers that operates my reptile room. It's all controlled manually using an app right from your cell phone. You can record temperature and humidity from the hour, day, week, month, and year. And also customize all your timer settings. stuck on the glass handles. Added a few more pieces of cork bark for enrichment and hides. And here it is, six foot wide, two foot deep, three foot high, Aki monitor enclosure. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Do me a favor, like and subscribe, that way I know to continue making videos.